Hello friends and welcome to another tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to cover this cart and this is available in VRIF's uh, demo scene. It's also in the prefabs. I'm going to show you how to turn this little cart into a car and um, we're going to fix some things with this and, and I think uh, a lot of people get a mistake in thinking that um, that VRIF is uh, perfect, it's not. It's it's a framework, and he's done a really good job of giving a basic, uh, some real basic stuff that uh, you can build off of. Um, as you can see, I'm slightly sideways. Sometimes you get thrown off the platform, and uh, when you land. You're sitting sideways, and we're going to fix that problem and a few more issues, and we're going to make it to where you can turn it into pretty much any car you want. So let's jump right in. So I'm here in the... Uh, XR demo scene. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get our cart. So go into your BNG framework and uh, go into your prefabs. And there's a couple of different versions here. There's with player and then just a straight up vehicle example and there's the mini one. We want the, we want the example. And... The biggest part about this is you're going to spend most of your time lining things up. Just bring this up to where it's, you know, not sinking into the ground. Okay. Well, next, we need a car. Now, the only thing that you got to deal with on the car is you got to make sure that the wheels are a separate, separate game object, and you got to make sure that the uh, steering wheel. Is a separate object so it can turn independently of the car some models won't have that they'll just be a straight-up 3d model so look out for that there is actually a uh, couple of free cars on a unity asset store there's a Porsche and there's a Lamborghini um, I'll leave a link um, down in the uh, description I've already downloaded it um, we're gonna use the Porsche so let's go ahead and pull this sucker in here <clears throat> Um, go ahead and go up to the car, go to the collider and just disable it. We don't need it. <clears throat> and we're going to put the car right on top of our cart. And we're going to try to line this thing up as best we can. Now the trick here is getting your wheels um, as close to center as you can. And uh, you can spend more time tweaking this than I am. But go down to your vehicle, and we're going to increase the size until we uh, get kind of close to the chassis base. And you're just going to have to work with it and line it up as best you can. Maybe a little too big. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just try to get it centered. Um, you can see I need to be a little bit bigger. And let's see. Let's come over to the side and pull it back. Touch. 
a little touch. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, and come around to the back and just kind of kind of helps if you go into two dimension. Yeah, getting on my car. Oh, go back here. It doesn't look too bad. That'll probably work. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to make this car a child of the vehicle. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is we're going to move the wheel models and make them children of the vehicle example. Make them children of the vehicle example. So go ahead and open up your wheels. And you want to make them children of the wheel graphics. Now the trick here is we want the wheels to turn, but we don't want the brake to turn. So we're going to duplicate the whole wheel. mistake stick with me copy we're gonna copy the wheel and paste it we're gonna do that for each one over here Now, <clears throat> what you want to do is on the original wheels, we're going to leave the brake behind. And we're just going to disable everything else. And that way you're just left with the brake. And then up here... We're going to disable the brake. There we go. Okay, so now, now the wheel will turn, but the brake won't. Okay, let's go ahead and close these up and make it a little easier to read. <clears throat> let's see. Okay. Now the trick here is we want the wheels that we just added to be centered to their parent. And now we're going to do that is we don't want it to move on the uh, on the x-axis 
because if you move it on the x-axis it's going to bring your bring your wheels in real far but we're going to zero out the other two so if you come I mean, in you're on your wheel let's just see what this does oh, oh. Oh, that's why. We go up to the wheel graphic. It has to be a child of the wheel graphic. There we go. Okay, so now let's close this one up. Open this one up. There we go. Center it on the Y. Center it on the Z. And this will center it to the uh, to the BNG wheel on the cart. So that when the wheels turn, they won't uh, they won't be all wobbly. Just make sure that they're a child of the wheel GFX. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now. From here, the car will actually drive. Um, if I pop into VR here, I could hop in this cart. The car would move with it. The wheels would turn. Everything would be all jolly and merry except for, as you saw earlier, if you get thrown from the car, if you go off of a cliff and you go into a tailspin, or if you get teleported out of the car from the script, you might even land upside down on your head. And the only way to reset that is to reset the tracking, the tracking space. And we're going to do that in a script. And I'm going to show you how I get in and out of this car. So let's uh, let's start by just clicking on vehicle example up here. And we're going to add a cube. Yeah, you know what? Let's just use an empty. Yeah, we'll use an empty. So create an empty. And this is going to be our car destination. Uh, and we're going to kind of do this. You'll be able to adjust this. This is where your player is going to going to be at. And we're going to use this to set our rotation and our position when we get in the car. Um, at any rate, I digress. So let's call this empty. Uh, I don't know. Let's uh, let's call it car destination. Okay. And just so we. Got it on top of us here. Let's uh, go ahead and right click on your car destination and go ahead and make a cube. And, uh, we don't want it to be a child. I just wanted it to, to be right there for me. And we're going to call this uh, inner cube. Okay. We're going to pull this out. Oops. We're just going to pull it out <clears throat> next to the car. Okay. And we need one more thing. It's, pardon me. I'm, if you uh, were listening to me on my last tutorial, you could hear my voice going. I've been fighting a cold, so I'm not coughing as much today, but as you can tell, I'm a little bit hoarse. Um, on top of this cube, we're going to create another empty. And I'm going to call this exit destination and I don't want it to be a child of the cube I just want it to be in the same spot now um, go up to your down rather to your uh, player controller if you scroll down there is a uh, uh, what's it called player moving platform support which works great I mean you could go in and tweak some of the uh, the code, and uh, I have played with it, and you can get it to do what you want. But this is just a simpler way to get you driving. Um, okay, and then uh, on your cart, the same thing. There's a moving platform script. Go ahead and disable that. You don't need it anymore. Now, we're going to create... <clears throat> Create a new folder in your assets, and we're going to call this uh, car scripts. 
just so you know what it is. <clears throat> well, yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and create the scripts. Why not? We'll create a script. We're going to call this car enter. Go ahead and open it up. Okay. And we'll go through and I'll like, I'll explain this and just like the last tutorial, I'll 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 leave the scripts in the uh I'll leave the scripts in the in the uh description so you don't have to type all this out. But we'll go over it. Um up here at the top we need using B and G. Uh, what did I call that? Okay. And don't worry about this. This is just referencing our other script that we haven't made yet. So basically what we're doing is we're getting our game objects. We're going to need our player controller, our vehicle, which is the very top parent, the cart, our car destination, which is the empty that we made. That's going to be on top of our seat. That's where we're going to send our player when he goes in the car. And then we're going to need the right hand model and the left hand model and You'll know why here in a second. And we're going to need a quaternion seat rotation and a vector three seat position. This is going to set the rotation and the position of the player once they're in the car. We're going to create a public float for the car player height. And this is going to adjust the height of the player when they go in the car. And if you don't adjust it and you jump in the car, your head's going to be through the roof or you won't be able to see anything. So you need to adjust your height down and it'll do it automatically for you. And you'll be able to adjust it in the script depending on the car that you have. And then we need a bull. Players in the car or players in the cube false is what I've got it set to. By default, it goes to false. I've just got a habit of writing false. <clears throat> and we're going to use the cube as a trigger. And uh, when the player is enters the cube on the outside of the car, it's going to turn our bull to true. And when it does, if you look here in the update function here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our seat rotation equal to our car destination which all we're doing is we're, we're setting these quaternions and, and this vector to uh, the destination empty that we made in the car so that we can align the player uh, with its rotation or its position so it'll be in the front seat when he goes into the car now if our bull player in the cube is true and our input button which I'm using the B button on the right controller you can use whatever button you want here or the input bridge or however you want to do it. Um, we're going to equal the position of our player to the seat. So we're going to teleport to the seat and set the rotation of position to be equal to the empty. And then we're going to set the player height using the BNG controller, which there's a character controller Y offset in there that's really handy for that. Um, you can use it for, you know, crouch and things like that. But we're going to use it for setting our player height. And then we're going to disable some stuff because you don't want uh, you don't want them doing certain things when they're in the car. You don't really want any movement at all. So we're going to disable the character controller. We're going to disable player teleport. We're going to disable the locomotion manager. We're going to disable the smooth locomotion and the player gravity. We're going to disable all of it. And in the hand models, there's a hand collision. So when you make a fist or a 
or a fi or point your finger, you'll collide off of stuff. And we're going to disable this because if you don't, and you're in the car and you make a fist, you'll hit the car and it'll bounce it all over the place. So we got to disable it. And then we're going to transform the parent to be the vehicle. We're going to move it from the uh, XR rig uh, being the parent to the vehicle being the parent. And that way the, the character moves with the vehicle. We do this, otherwise, you know, you would just fly off of the car. The car would take off without you. And then uh, once we're in the car, the uh, the inner cube, the cube that's uh, outside of the car that we're going to use to get in, we're going to disable it. Um, I skipped one. We're going to disable it. And we're going to enable our... Uh, Sorry, back up. We're going to set a bool on our other script to true, which is called in the car. And we'll go over that in a second. We're actually setting a bool in our other script. And then we're going to set the game object that uh, is outside the car or trigger to false. And the reason you want to do this is if you're in a multiplayer situation and you've got a bunch of these cars jumping around and uh, you get in your car... Well, if you don't disable it, somebody could just come up to the car and jump in on top of you. So this is for in case you're in that situation, it already does it for you. Okay. Let's go back into Unity. Let's go ahead and create another script. And we're going to call this car exit. Now again, you're going to need using BNG. Now this is going to be the script that's to get out of the car. So we're going to need a game object XR rig. We're going to need a game object player controller. We're going to need the vehicle again. We're going to need the car enter, which is the enter cube outside of the car. We're going to need our exit destination, which is the empty outside of the car. We're going to need the tracking space. And we're going to need the right-hand model of the left-hand model. We're going to need a quaternion initial rotation and a vector 3 initial position. We're going to need a public float, player height exit, which we've set previous for you. But it's set to public so that you can adjust it to your vehicle, just like the last script. And we need a public bull in the car, which is what we're setting from our other script. So if you look over here, you can see it's not red anymore. Um, so on start, we're going to store our initial rotation and initial position of our tracking space. And that way when we get thrown from the car, we can reference what it was before we got thrown out of the car and reset our tracking space, rotation, and position. And this will take care of the problem with landing on your head or being sideways or anything like that. So, all right, so in the update function, we're calling if the player controller transform position dot or dot y is less than negative 75, so meters, if, if that's the way you count cubes, so we'll say 75 cubes, um, and in the car is true. So if you're in the car, and you fall 75 meters below zero, it's going to throw you out of the car. This comes in handy if you, uh, you know, drive off a cliff into nowhere, you drive off the earth, anything like that. Now, or if you're in the car and the car is true and you hit your B button, which you can set this to whatever you want, it'll push you out of the car and put you in your exit destination so you can get in and out of the car. So, <clears throat> when we exit, we're going to exit and teleport the player to our empty that we created, our exit destination outside of the car. We're going to re-enable our gravity. We're going to uh, reset our parent to the XR rig. And then we're going to re-enable the character controller, the BNG player controller's Y offset. 
It's going to be equal to the player height exit, which is up here. And then we're going to re-enable the player teleport, the locomotion manager, and smooth locomotion. And then we're going to re-enable our hand collision so that we can punch stuff again. And then we're going to reset our tracking space, local rotation, and local position to what our initial rotation and initial position was. So if you're upside down coming back, it's going to automatically reposition it and reset it. And then it's going to set in the car to false, which is our bullet because we're no longer in the car. And then it's going to reactivate the cube outside the car. I know that was a lot, but um, I tried to notate it as best I could. Okay, so let's go back into Unity. Okay, so let's get on our cube here, our inner cube, and we're going to take our car inner script. We're going to put it on car enter cube on the inner cube. And then our car exit is going to go on our uh, car destination. Okay. So now we got to populate a few things here. We got to do our player controller. We got to do the vehicle. We got to do our car destination. We're going to do our right hand model. which is actually on the model that you selected, once to the left and right. All right, well, let's go to our car destination. And populate this. I want your XR rig. Once your player controller. Once the vehicle. Once your car inner cube. Once the exit destination. Once your tracking space. which is right here underneath camera rig under player controller and it wants your right hand model and your left hand model again okay now before we go jumping in VR we got to realign our wheel here so go ahead and grab it That explains it. Okay. Grab our wheel. We're going to pull it down and pull it over. Line it up to our steering wheel here. I found that I've actually never tried to tilt the steering wheel to match this, but I don't think it would be very comfortable to drive in VR anyway. So I always tilt the, tilt the steering wheel uh, to match the uh, to match the uh, cart's steering wheel uh, alignment. And it's, you can't really snap it perfectly. It's something to do with the model. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But anyway, you get the idea. We're just trying to, same thing that we did with the, uh, same thing that we did with the, the wheels on the outside of the car. We're just trying to get this to line up uh, as close to center of the steering wheel as we can.
and you can play with this more than I am for the sake of the video I'm just gonna kind of rough it in all right then we want to go and take our steering wheel that looks pretty good our steering wheel from our uh, from our model car up here and uh, find it steer yeah, that's it yeah yeah it's good enough good enough for this and we're gonna bring it up here and make it a child of our our steering wheel oh oops no back here let's go and unpack the prefab so it'll let us do what we're wanting to do And you want it to be a child of the graphics. Nope, oh, nope. One too far. Child of the rotator. Sorry. All right, and again. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oh that's right. You just mess with your rotation until you can get it centered up. Anyway, moving on. So from here we can drive this car. Um, let's go and jump in VR and test it out and see if I've missed anything. Yep. If you go down to your inner cube, you got to make it a trigger. Let's try that again. You can see we can get in and out of the car. Um, when you get in here like this, let me back up a little bit here. Let's get in here and align our player with the seat. Okay. So go ahead and go back to your scene. And uh, come down to your car destination. And just kind of try to line your player up and you can jump in and out of VR or jump in and out of the car until you feel like your alignment's right and then just go up here and copy the uh, component and then when you come off of it just go ahead and paste your uh, paste your uh, properties Sorry, excuse me. Paste component values. Okay, so that would be how you line up your car. All right, so let's try to drive it now. As you can see, the wheels are turning. About the only problem we got to fix is the colliders. All right. Alright, so now 
if you go up to your vehicle example and you go down to the wheels and on front wheel and so on there's a wheel collider so your exit cube go ahead and disable the mesh the way you can't see it all right so come back up to your wheels front left and we're going to increase the size of the collider radius you just want to get it kind of big enough it doesn't have to be perfect and like I said, your alignment will end up being better than mine. And once you get it pretty close to where you want it, just copy it and uh, paste it to the rest of them. Let's see, did I miss one? Yeah. Okay. So now... Our car is not sinking into the ground anymore. Okay, so now all we got to do is go in here and get rid of some meshes on this vehicle example. That's stuff we don't want to see. Um, we don't want to see the axle. We don't want to see the fender. We don't want to see their steering wheel or PNG's steering wheel. So come down here to his graphics. And go ahead and get rid of the, that and all these cubes. This is the uh, crossbars on the steering wheel. Uh, let's see. We don't want to see his wheels. Find the, the meshes. We don't even want to see the tire, the tube on each one of the tires. Boy, we're left with just the car. We'll keep the speedometer, why not? Okay. Let me move it down. Let me see how fast we're going. Why not, right? Okay. From here, we should have a fully functional car. Let's test it out. Okay, so now, if you come up to your vehicle example, and you'll see on the vehicle controller, we got some stuff here. Um, our max speed, we're driving a Porsche, so let's make it 200 miles an hour. Uh, your torque is how quickly it gets there. So, I feel like the cart moves as, as slow as a cart. Um, you can adjust your steering angle if you feel like it. Uh, there's some other stuff in here, uh, your engine audio, the idle sound, you can, you know, put a really killer engine sound in there or whatever. So, uh, let's try it out now. Um, see what we got. We'll drive off the edge of the earth and make sure everything's working properly.
And this is really funny when this car returns. It just randomly lands. Sometimes it'll be on its roof. It's it's pretty hilarious just to watch it hit the ground. But anyway, you can fix all that stuff later in the uh in the vehicle uh in the vehicle controller script. And there you have it. That's how you use the cart to create a vehicle. And you can use that for other things. Look out for future tutorials. I'm working on a jet. Uh, should be pretty interesting. Thanks for joining.